Today I'm offering my take on the new 4K releases of James Cameron's The Abyss, Aliens, and True Lies, and I'll also be sharing my thoughts on Cameron's approach to film restoration and uh, some of the controversy surrounding these new 4K releases. So let's rock this. Hi everyone, how you doing? I'm Fuzz. Welcome to episode two of 4K Takeaways. And of course, it's James Cameron Day today. Very exciting, which means I'll be offering my take on the new 4K releases of Aliens, uh, The Abyss, and of course, True Lies. Uh, but I also have a few things to say about the, uh, the nature of these 4K restorations overall and the subsequent controversy that they have generated. Now, uh, I know the rollout of these titles has been a total mess. Um, of course, leave it to Disney to screw everything up with what should have been an absolute no-brainer of a rollout. I mean, these were only like the most anticipated uh, physical media releases probably ever. Uh, many of us have been waiting years for these things to be released on 4K, or even just in some cases, HD or better. But apparently the yo-yos uh, running the show at Disney uh, couldn't figure out how to accurately predict or prepare for the demand for these titles. I know there are a lot of people out there uh, still waiting for their Cameron 4Ks to arrive, even people who uh, pre-ordered weeks in advance. Even mine were late arriving, and I ordered mine on the first day the listings went live on Amazon. But to be fair, I got my copies within like six days of the release date. Uh, so I know that I haven't had it nearly as bad as some of you out there have. Now, speaking of Disney, I've got to address something real quick here before we get into everything, and that is the stickers that they put on their slipcovers. I mean, what the hell is that, right? Um, it, that's super annoying, and honestly, I don't know any collector that uh, thinks it's a good idea to put stickers on, on slipcovers, right? I, I just, I mean, except for maybe the collectors that don't care about slipcovers, maybe they don't care. But, uh, you know, for anybody that, that wants their slipcovers to look decent, the last thing you want to see when you get a new uh, title like this is a sticker on it that you have to then try and peel off without screwing up the, the, uh, the slipcover, right? Um, and, and as you can see here, I actually started to try and peel it off there in the corner, and then I realized this was not going to come off easily, so I, I kind of gave up on it. Uh, I wasn't sure if I really wanted to mess with this too much, but the adhesive used on these stickers is extremely strong. It's really hard to get these things off, and honestly, I don't really understand that. I mean, why would they do something like that? I mean, if they really feel they need to put a sticker on these things, at least make it more of a removable label, something that can peel on and off easily. I mean, they have removable labels out there. You can buy removable labels. So I don't know why they wouldn't have used uh, that kind of adhesive for something like this. Now, true lies, though, I did actually attempt to get the, uh, the sticker off just to see you know, how hard or easy it was going to be. Uh, and I chose True Lies because I figured if I screwed up my slipcover, I'd rather it be on True Lies than Aliens or the Abyss, right? Um, so I did manage to get this off using a combination of uh, like saline baby wipes and some Goo Gone, but uh, you got to be really careful with it. And even I, um, there's a couple spots there. I don't know if you can actually see them, but there's a couple little spots where the, the paper kind of tore off a little bit. The ink came off a little bit. Uh, and I was pretty careful, but uh, I figured with this one, it wasn't as big of a deal uh, because of the, the natural background of the art design. Um, it doesn't show up that much, but you know, it, you know, I did kind of screw this up a little bit, kind of, you can see the, the edge of the slip kind of uh, got worn out there a little bit. So, you know, I don't know if I really want to do that with my copy of Aliens in the Abyss. Um, after I went through this, I was like, you know what, maybe I'll just leave them on Aliens in the Abyss uh, because I don't want to make those slip covers look like crap. Of course, they, they kind of look like crap anyway with the stickers on them, but I figured if I do any damage to the slipcover, it's going to look even more like crap uh, than if I were to just leave the stickers on. But I don't understand why they would even do that. I mean, the fact that they're willing to put a really strong adhesive sticker on a slipcover, that tells me that whoever made the decisions uh, on the packaging here at Disney didn't really understand the collector mentality or doesn't really understand the collector mentality. I mean, it's the same kind of cluelessness that comes with not being able to accurately anticipate the demand for these titles. And let's get real here, shall we? It's because at Disney, it's Clown World. Am I right? Right? I'm talking Clown World on multiple levels, right? And it goes straight to the top. 
starts with their CEO and it goes all the way on down from there. Essentially, Disney has gotten rid of all the good people there that were experienced and knowledgeable about the stuff that they're creating and trying to sell, and that extends to the whole media division as well. Now, before I dive into all this in more detail, uh, I do want to give a quick shout out to a new channel member. Uh, Rod Schaff just became the latest member of the Fuzz Club. Uh, Rod, thank you so much for your support of the channel. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'll look forward to uh, chatting with you more in comments or whatnot uh, in the future. And if any of you would like to know more about the Fuzz Club, there is a link in the description below that you can click on, or you can just click that join button below, uh, and it'll bring up all the uh, membership information for you. All right, before I get into each individual release, uh, I just wanted to share some, uh, some opening thoughts here with you guys uh, about the controversy surrounding these releases and the way Cameron and Lightstorm uh, have handled these restorations. The common complaint that you will hear uh, among critics uh, is that of DNR, right? They claim that these had been DNR'd, um, that, uh, that all the grain has been scrubbed away along with all the detail, uh, and they maintain that these look waxy as a result. But DNR is not really an accurate term here. Uh, that's not what's going on. It's just that DNR has basically become a form of shorthand that we all use uh, for any restoration that people think maybe looks a little too digitally processed. When people think of like traditional uh, DNR, like a blanket DNR, uh, what they usually mean is that the fine detail has been scrubbed uh, along with the grain um, and it gives it a waxy, unnatural looking appearance. But like I said, that's not an accurate characterization for these releases. The reality here is much, much more nuanced and uh, precision oriented than some people have portrayed it. These titles have not been DNR'd in the uh, traditional sense that we have come to know and dread. Uh, the software they used on these restorations is far more advanced than that. In other words, these new 4K releases do not look like the uh, 4K release of Terminator 2. Uh, Terminator 2 had a, a completely different uh, problem. That was a studio screw-up. That was not a James Cameron thing. That was something where Studio Canal screwed up and used a 3D master for the 4K, which you don't do that, right? Uh, and that's why it looks the way it does. It was Waxworks Central over at uh, T2, right? Cameron used a relatively new uh, proprietary software uh, developed by a company called Park Road Post. Um, it's an AI-based machine deep learning system. It's the same software that Peter Jackson used uh, for uh, his Beatles Get Back documentary. And to reinforce that point about uh, the nature of the software they're using, uh, Bill Hunt from the Digital Bits had uh, an interesting editor's note in his True Lies review. Now, you guys probably hear me talk about Bill Hunt quite a bit on this channel. I'm a big fan of the Digital Bits. Uh, that is his online publication, and Bill Hunt is just a solid guy. Um, he seems to have some very credible sources, and uh, at least in the case of these Cameron releases, um, he was in touch with people who were actually working on the discs. So, uh, you know, he's a solid source for this kind of stuff. And here's what uh, Bill Hunt had to say here uh, in that review. Um, he said, this is definitely not old school DNR here, uh, a term that far too many audio video enthusiasts are overusing today. Uh, remastering tools have evolved a great deal since the dreaded digital noise reduction days of the aughts. This park road process is something entirely new. Now, what's unique about this technology, at least as best as I can understand it, uh, is that it allowed Cameron to uh, reduce the amount of visible photochemical grain in the image without losing all that great fine detail. And then on top of that, the uh, existing detail was enhanced, right? That's the word they used, enhanced, uh, algorithmically uh, with this technology. And I think what it's going to come down to is whether or not people like the look of these new enhancements. The end result uh, of using this new technology is that the films have a very clean and much more modern look and feel to them uh, than some are used to. And that's where the controversy is coming from, right? Um, the fact that Cameron has taken this approach for these beloved films uh, has really rubbed some people the wrong way. However, uh, I've got to make a distinction here because there are a lot of Cameron haters out there. Uh, and I got to say up front, uh, I don't put a whole lot of stock in anything being said by the Cameron haters. And when I say Cameron haters here, uh, I'm not talking about 
uh, people who are fans of his work and just have a genuine and sincere difference of opinion uh, in terms of their preferences for the look of these 4Ks. Not everyone is going to like the way these new restorations look, and that's totally okay. The way I see it, there's plenty of room for uh, a little friendly discourse and healthy disagreement on these things. But a Cameron hater will take things to a whole new level uh, and start attaching negative attributes to his personality. Like, they'll claim he's being lazy or greedy or, uh, or that he doesn't respect his fans because he's butchering his films. Uh, or whatnot. The Cameron haters can get pretty over the top and uh, even a little vitriolic uh, with their rhetoric. But once you start attacking Cameron on a more personal level like that, um, you basically totally lose me and, uh, and you bust your own credibility in the process. So I would say there's a subsection of Cameron fans uh, who are really more like haters than fans, um, and I will typically take their comments with a grain of salt. All right, so here's how I feel about uh, Cameron's approach to these 4Ks. Um, I don't have a problem with these restorations at all um, because I feel like I understand where Cameron's coming from with these releases and what he was trying to do. And ultimately, because I'm guessing that these look the way Cameron wants them to look. That more modern looking aesthetic is by design. And uh, I think a lot of people are maybe mistaking that new look for waxiness uh, when really it's just a different look, a different feel than people are already used to. Some people may interpret that ultra clean looking image as something that's a little bit more unnatural looking, but the fine detail is still very much there and in many instances is completely off the charts uh, and far beyond anything we've ever seen before with these films on home media. So here's the way I see it. Uh, let's think about what we know about James Cameron and about his whole groove, right? Uh, first off, uh, Cameron has always been an innovator and someone who likes to experiment with new technology, um, if not help develop the technology himself. And he's even been known to wait for uh, long stretches of time in between films uh, to allow technology the time to uh, develop and catch up to what he wanted to do. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, ever since at least the early 90s, uh, Cameron has always been the type of person that strives to make his movies look as clean and as modern as possible uh, relative to the era he's making the film in. Meaning, uh, as clean and as modern looking as possible within the confines of the technology of the day. I mean, when I first saw Terminator 2 in 1991 in the theater, um, it looked like a state-of-the-art film at the time. The T-1000 liquid metal effects were absolutely cutting edge, and we'd never really seen anything like that except for maybe The Abyss just a couple years prior, which ended up, the effects there ended up being kind of a precursor to what would happen in T-2 uh, a couple years later. But essentially, uh, Terminator 2 was a pretty groundbreaking film in terms of the kind of visual effects that they had. And back then, at the time, it felt like we were watching a very clean and modern looking film uh, relative to what we had seen before that. So I don't think anyone should be surprised that uh, Cameron would experiment with new technology uh, when he's restoring and remastering his films, especially when he has the opportunity to uh, reduce the, uh, the visible grain and give his films that more modern look without losing all that great fine detail in the process. I can totally understand Cameron being on board with that type of process, uh, and like I said, I don't have a problem with it. So I don't know, guys, but it seems to me that these 4K restorations look exactly the way uh, Cameron would have made these films look when they were first made if he had had the technology to do so at the time. And I'm totally here for it because overall, taken as a whole, I think these new Cameron 4Ks look fantastic. I certainly don't think they look uh, bad uh, on any level, um, but they do look a little different than what we're used to, uh, and not everyone's going to be able to handle it. Uh, personally, I like that modern look. Um, it's like rediscovering the films and watching them in a whole new light. Um, it's fun, and it's exciting, and uh, I, I just don't consider myself to be such a purist that that kind of thing is going to bother me. I think these are the best these films have ever looked on home media, even True Lies, and uh, I personally think that they're a must-own for any James Cameron fan.
Okay, so that's sort of my uh, macro view of these releases, uh, but now let's get into my thoughts on each individual film. Okay, so let's start off with Aliens, uh, and of course to uh, celebrate the occasion, I've got my Hudson Game Over Man t-shirt on here. For those of you who are into that sort of thing, um, had to do it, right? I mean, if there was ever a video to wear this shirt on, it had to be this one, right? But we've got Aliens here, and uh, you know, I've said this before, I'm sure those of you who are regular viewers to the channel already know this, but this is my all-time favorite film uh, with Terminator right behind it. Um, you know, James Cameron is one of my favorite directors, so uh, I'm not even going to try to pretend to be uh, neutral or unbiased here uh, with this release. Now, this is a film I watch probably at least several times a year, if not more. Um, it's a big time comfort movie for me. It's one of those ones I pop on whenever I don't want to have to think too hard about something, or I just want to be entertained and, and uh, watch something very, very familiar. This is the one that uh, more often than others uh, goes in the player. So I can't help but to uh, feel like I kind of know this movie like the back of my hand. Of course, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but uh, you guys get the idea. I know this movie well. All right, so let's get into the uh, the image presentation here. Um, first off, it's not clear to me what type of source was used for this uh, this new restoration. I've seen other people out there, including YouTube reviewers that I respect, uh, refer to this as a native 4K restoration, uh, which would indicate to me that it was sourced from a 4K scan of the original camera negative. However, I've not been able to completely confirm that, but I've also read, uh, namely from Bill Hunt at the Digital Bits, that it's possible this could also be sourced from a, an existing 2K scan of the original camera negative that they already had. But either way, uh, I wouldn't get too hung up on that. It doesn't really matter uh, because this 4K is absolutely stunning and it looks outstanding. And you do have Dolby Vision and HDR10 here. Now, before I go any further here, I wanna mention that there's been this post going around on social media uh, by some blowhard on Reddit who's uh, levying all these wild accusations about this release and really just smearing the shit out of this release. He's saying things like it's lazy fake 4K or that it's fake HDR. Um, he's all hyper-focused on things like the nits and the peak nits. Um, and he's, you know, upset that the nits aren't high enough. He's got like heat map analysis and spectral analysis and all this crap going on. Frankly, it's just totally ridiculous. Now, personally, I don't put a whole lot of stock in those kinds of posts, uh, what I recommend is that you just get the disc, you pop it in, and then you let your own eyes be the judge, right? You decide for yourself. Um, and above all, enjoy the film. Have fun with it. Because this 4K looks absolutely amazing, and it's definitely an upgrade uh, over previous releases. I was pretty blown away by the image presentation here, and uh, I think this 4K is easily the best this film has ever looked on physical media. Um, the level of detail is incredible and it very much uh, surpasses any version I've ever seen of this film previously. Um, I noticed details in this new 4K that I had never seen before. You certainly see a lot more detail in skin, in uh, facial features, uh, complexion, pores, tiny little beads of sweat maybe hidden in the shadow of someone's face, um, hairs or whatnot. Also the alien effects, the alien slime, the, the sets and locations, the set pieces, the structures, um, all of these things just look so incredible with uh, so much glistening detail that's crackling with life and totally popping off the screen for you. The 4K image definitely has a lot more depth to it than we saw on Blu-ray, uh, and I feel like the image just seems so much more vibrant and alive on 4K. So you gotta take the haters out there with a grain of salt and just trust your own eyes. Now that said, the image does look a little different than what people are used to, as I indicated earlier, um, and not everyone is going to appreciate what Cameron has done here. The, uh, the grain has been reduced significantly um, to the point where the average person may not even notice any grain. And Cameron's given this film a much more modern look, uh, a much cleaner appearance, which means it maybe lacks some of the grit that people are accustomed to. Personally, I really like the way it looks. Um, I think it looks really cool, and uh, it's a bit of a different way. Like I indicated earlier, it's a bit of a different way to experience this film uh, than we've been used to before. Um, and that aspect in and of itself 
was a lot of fun for me. Like I liked the new look and seeing this new look, I had a lot of fun with it. Now, don't get me wrong, it's still the same film, right? It's still the aliens we know and love. It's just been kind of given a bit of an upgrade, right? It's been updated uh, to, uh, you know, presumably appeal to modern audiences and, uh, you know, to satisfy uh, Cameron's preferences as well. But if I'm being fair, uh, I will admit there are a few shots or scenes where uh, maybe the computer processing is a little bit more apparent. It's a little bit more noticeable. Now, it's not waxworks. I don't think it makes people look waxy. I just think it's a different look than we're used to with this film. And I can totally understand if uh, some people feel like certain parts are looking a little too processed. But like I said, I just don't personally have a problem with the way it looks. Uh, I think it looks awesome. Um, I like the modern look. So ultimately, I think it's just going to depend on the individual as to whether or not you dig this 4K release. Um, but I do think it is a significant improvement uh, over the previous Blu-ray. Um, and I just think it looks damn good. Okay, so let's move on to special features here. I'm not going to go through every single special feature included, but just the big ones that I thought were the uh, the most interesting. Um, now, I noticed uh, there's a lot of archival uh, special features here, a lot of archival stuff that was not included on the uh, the previous Blu-ray release, right? This was pretty, uh, didn't have a whole lot in the way of special features. So I was uh, pleased to see that they actually included some of these archival special features uh, on this. Let's start off with a, a new special feature. Uh, there is a new uh, featurette. It's about 30 minutes long uh, that is really good. It's a really nice presentation. It's called The Inspiration and Design of Aliens. Um, like I said, it's about a half hour. It's a Cameron retrospective with uh, James Cameron mostly uh, reflecting back on aliens. Um, and I thought it was pretty good. It was really entertaining and uh, it, it actually had a little bit more meatiness to it uh, than I thought it would. So uh, yeah, enjoyable special feature. But the big one, if you can handle standard definition, the big one is the, uh, the making of aliens. It's called Superior Firepower, the making of aliens. And uh, it's an amazing three hour making of documentary that was originally created uh, for the 2003 Alien Quadrilogy DVD set, uh, which I bought when it first came out. Uh, I absolutely love that set. It was a pretty significant set. Um, because I believe it was the first time 20th Century Fox had ever put all of the Alien films into a single box set before. And there were a bunch of new special features on that box. Eventually, we got a, uh, a Blu-ray set, uh, Alien Anthology, which was basically just like the uh, Quadrilogy DVD set, except on Blu-ray. Uh, I bought this used when I first got back into collecting uh, because all I had was that DVD set at that time. Um, so I had to have it on Blu-ray. But the, the important thing about this is uh, the making of documentary is extremely extensive. I mean, it covers every aspect uh, of this film. Uh, again, it's in standard definition. Uh, so if you can't handle watching things in standard definition, uh, you might not dig it as much. But I thought it looked fine. Uh, and I found that usually for making of documentaries, older making of documentaries, that's one of the few things I can actually handle uh, watching standard definition for. Uh, because I'm not having some big, deep cinematic experience, right? It doesn't need to be the highest resolution possible. Now, would I prefer it's in HD? Of course I would, you know, but this is one of the best documentaries, one of the best film uh, making of documentaries that I've ever seen uh, to this day. It's like a major deep dive into aliens covering almost every aspect of this film. Uh, you get to see how they design the aliens. You get to see how they design the sets and what their considerations were. Uh, you learn about some of the problems and, and conflicts on the set between uh, Cameron and the crew. Um, it's just really fascinating stuff. Plus, beyond that three-hour documentary, there's a whole nother hour of enhancements uh, in addition to that. So this thing is just loaded with tons of great stuff, tons of information about the making of this film. But for those who have never seen these special features before, I'm really glad that they included them on the new 4K release because uh, I think that it's uh, any fan of Aliens should definitely watch the, uh, the making of documentary. Uh, it's just great stuff. 
All right, now just moving on to packaging briefly, there's not too much to say about the packaging here. I do like the slip covers, uh, the type of slip covers that Disney puts out with these. I like those rounded corners and uh, they're usually pretty nice looking. Um, the sticker is the only downside, right? Uh, they, they practically ruin the slip by putting that sticker on it, which is just stupid. But I'm not going to dock on points on my overall review score uh, just for the sticker, right? Uh, I mean, I could, but, uh, you know, given how long we've waited for some of these releases, I, that just seems kind of uh, trivial. So overall, for my review score, I give this a solid 9 out of 10. It's just a fantastic release, and uh, I would highly recommend picking this up uh, if you're a big James Cameron fan, if you're a big fan of this film, uh, personally, I think it's a must own for any fan of this film. But uh, I realize not everybody is going to feel exactly the same way um, with the new uh, modern look the film has. But 9 out of 10, that sounds about right to me. All right, so let's move on next to The Abyss here. Um, We've waited a long time for this bad boy, haven't we? Uh, this one never got an official Blu-ray release. The last time this thing was released officially, it was on an old special edition DVD. I mean, we had heard for 10 years this was being worked on, and uh, some people had even given up hope that we'd ever even get a Blu-ray or better release of this film. Now, I gotta say, uh, even though Aliens is my all-time favorite film, uh, this was the uh, single most anticipated release of the bunch uh, for me personally. This was the big one that we uh, desperately needed in HD or better. And I am so pleased that they did right by this film uh, in a big way, and they gave us the full meal deal on 4K. The coveted extended special edition, which uh, I personally believe is the only way to watch this film. There's some critical context uh, that we get in the extended special edition version that we do not get in the theatrical version, particularly as it relates to the ending of the film, which is just so much more uh, impactful in the extended version. So if you've never seen it, I would highly encourage you to uh, watch the special edition cut, the extended version, uh, on your first watch. It, again, it really is the only way to see this film. Uh, it's a little long. It's like 2 hours and 51 minutes. Um, well, 2.43 if you don't include the, the credits. There's like 8 minutes of, of closing credits, but, uh, but it is pretty long. Uh, but it's absolutely worth it. You know, this was really a groundbreaking film uh, for the time. At the time it was released, uh, there was a lot of stuff done in this film that had never been done before. Um, it was filmed in a massive, uh, abandoned, and converted uh, nuclear containment tank uh, that was about 60 feet deep. Just huge. The habitat that they used in the movie was a real uh, custom-built and pressurized set that they built in the bottom of this containment tank before they filled it up with water. And I believe to this day, uh, the habitat that they built for this film uh, was the largest underwater uh, movie set ever constructed. Um, and I mean, it certainly was at the time, and that may still be the case uh, today. It may still hold that record. I mean, they used real subs, um, and they had custom lights designed and built for this purpose uh, that could be used underwater, custom cameras that could be used underwater. Um, they even had custom helmets built. All the helmets all the divers are wearing in the movie, um, yeah, they, those were custom helmets that they had built for this movie. Um, they didn't actually exist in real life uh, until James Cameron asked for them. I mean, this was the real deal in terms of innovation in filmmaking. This was was absolutely the real deal. And a lot of what they learned on this film from this experience and the technology that they developed for the film, it would come in handy later. Uh, and James Cameron would use some of those same uh, things that he learned for both Titanic and Avatar Way of Water. And there were some pretty groundbreaking uh, visual effects as well, uh, courtesy of ILM, um, some of which would be further developed uh, for Terminator 2, for the liquid metal effects for Terminator 2 a couple years later. So the water worm in this, that was kind of the precursor to uh, what we would see with the T-1000 in T-2. All right, so let's talk about the image quality. Um, this is sourced from a 4K scan of the original camera negative. Uh, includes both Dolby Vision and HDR10. Um, this is absolutely an incredible uh, restoration, uh, and I think it's actually the best of the, the three camera releases that came out last week, although Aliens is very close, right? Um, but this one just 
just edged it out, I think, uh, on the, uh, the image quality and the image presentation. The level of detail here is completely off the charts, uh, especially when you're looking at people and their physical characteristics. Uh, hair is so crisp, uh, and you see every tiny little facial hair, uh, every pore, every mole, every dimple, um, down to even the tiniest drops of sweat or water. All the sets and models just look absolutely fantastic. Uh, and the visual effects actually hold up surprisingly well, considering, you know, we're talking 1989 here. I mean, they look exactly like they should. Um, the NTIs have their characteristically soft appearance, uh, but you can make out a lot more detail in the lights and the structures and uh, in the intricacies of their devices and crafts. Uh, the clarity of this image is just fantastic. Uh, like Aliens, it also has a much more modern look to it than, uh, than what people are used to uh, with a significant amount of grain reduction. But with this film in particular, it all works just so well. The look and the aesthetic uh, that Cameron was going for with these restorations, it really, uh, I think, lends itself well to this particular film. It is a gorgeous looking presentation, uh, yet to my eyes, it also looks exactly exactly like it should. It's the same film that I've always loved, only way better. Essentially, this is everything I could have hoped for with this restoration, uh, and it looks nothing short of spectacular. Okay, so let's talk about the, uh, the special features here real quick. Um, there is a new featurette called The Legacy of the Abyss. It's about 25 minutes long, uh, and it's a great presentation. Uh, I believe you got James Cameron, Gail Ann Hurd, John Landau, and maybe a couple other people uh, speaking on the film and uh, kind of reflecting on the abyss, uh, but it's a really good uh, featurette. And I'm glad they included at least a little something new there, uh, like they did with Aliens as well. But the big special feature here for me was uh, carried over from the old uh, DVD special edition set, um, and that is Under Pressure, The Making of the Abyss. Um, it's about an hour-long uh, documentary. It's in standard definition and 4x3, so you got to be okay with that. But this is an awesome documentary, and, uh, well, next to uh, Superior Firepower, the Aliens documentary, uh, I'd say this is probably one of my favorite documentaries, film making of film documentaries uh, ever. This is a fascinating look at just how extensive the filmmaking process can be at the hands of a brilliant auteur like James Cameron. When you see all the things they had to do to make this film come alive uh, and what Cameron put everyone through uh, to make this film happen, um, it will blow your mind, some of the things they had to do. I mean, it was nuts, and it's definitely one of the more intriguing uh, making of documentaries I've ever seen. Um, again, the, the visual quality of the documentary is not that great. Uh, you know, you got to be okay with the standard definition uh, and the, uh, the four by three aspect ratio, but the information in this documentary is just awesome. I mean, it's, it's definitely one of the more informative and fascinating uh, making of documentaries I've ever seen. You know, when I first heard they were coming out with this, uh, there were two things I was hoping for, aside from a good restoration. I was hoping that we'd get the uh, extended special edition version on 4K, and we got that. And then the other thing I was hoping for is that they would carry over that archival making of documentary, uh, carry it over from the old DVD, and they did that. So really, I don't have any complaints about this release at all. Now, moving on to packaging, I don't have much to say there other than this is my favorite slipcover of the three that came out last week. Uh, I like the look of this slipcover the most, um, but of course, you still got the sticker there, so that's a pain in the ass. Uh, but, uh, you know, the packaging is not really factoring into uh, my score here. Um, and my overall score for The Abyss is a 9.5 out of 10. Uh, I couldn't quite bring myself to give it a perfect 10. I, I feel like we would need to have uh, at least some better packaging if I was to hit that perfect 10 level, um, you know, like a nice chunky box or something like that. Um, so that's the only reason I didn't give it a perfect 10. But honestly, the restoration for me really is a perfect 10. So yeah, this is just a fantastic release. Um, you know, it was tough. It was a tough call between this and Aliens being my favorite uh, of the three Cameron releases that came out last week. But uh, this one just edged out Aliens just a little bit there. By the way, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, do me a favor and please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, and also don't forget to hit the notification bell as well uh, so you can be alerted when I'm posting videos that you might be interested in. 
Also, don't forget to like the video as well. Give it a good thumbs up. Uh, that really does help uh, more than people realized with the, uh, the channel's visibility out there on YouTube. Uh, helps with the algorithm. Uh, thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. All right, and let's move on to our last one here. Uh, of course, True Lies, uh, a great comedic action film with a lot of thrills. Um, I've always loved this one. And even though this one doesn't rank quite as high for me as other James Cameron films, uh, I was reminded when watching it the other night of uh, just how solid of an action film this is. Um, it's got everything you could want in a great action film. Uh, just so much fun. Uh, this is another one that never made it to uh, Blu-ray. The last official release of this film was on DVD. Um, there were some HD streams out there periodically that you could watch uh, and a low quality uh, Italian bootleg release, uh, but nothing legitimate uh, on Blu-ray or better for this film up until now. So let's get into the image presentation here. Uh, this is another restoration that was sourced from a 4K scan of the original camera negative um, and includes Dolby Vision and HDR10. Um, now, this one doesn't look quite as good as the other two ones do. I'll just say that up front. But it still looks great compared to uh, what we had previously. And uh, considering its home media history, this is easily the best this film has ever looked on home media. You do get some great detail that uh, surpasses anything we've ever seen before with this film, uh, including HD streams. Uh, the image just looks as bold and uh, as colorful as ever. Um, however, there are a few things to consider here about this release. Uh, this film does have, in general, a more processed look uh, than either Aliens or The Abyss. Uh, however, like the other two here, it also has been given uh, a more modern aesthetic, a more modern feel feel. Some people may feel that it looks a little too processed in uh, some shots, uh, with some shots just looking a little too clean or a little too unnatural, um, or occasionally characters even looking a little bit waxy. However, I would encourage people not to put too much weight in the uh, one or two uh, cherry pick still frame shots that, that indicate this film does not look that great. Um, you know, people have been plastering that same uh, photo or same couple photos all over the internet and trying to paint the entire viewing experience as though everything looks like that one still frame shot. And that's just not true. Um, most of the film looks great, and a still frame shot is not going to be representative of what the film will actually look like when it's in motion. So those still frame shots can be a little bit deceiving. But if I'm being honest, uh, the processing definitely feels a little heavier uh, on this film. I don't feel like the other two films had this issue as much. Um, but, you know, there could be a number of different reasons uh, for the approach that they took here. Uh, I think it was Paul over at Twin Flicks uh, indicated the other night that there may have been some issues uh, with the source materials for this. The original camera negative um, was apparently not in very good shape. Um, and this restoration approach uh, apparently ended up being their best option. Essentially, this was the best they could come up with uh, from what I understand. Uh, the other thing worth noting here uh, about this release is that there are some shots in the film uh, that are going to appear a little softer in general because that softness is actually baked into the source. Uh, meaning there's there's some sort of haze or, or fog or smoke or something uh, going on in the scene or shot that has obscured the detail in that shot a little bit. Or it may come down to the type of lens or filters or whatnot that uh, were being used in a given scene. So just keep in mind those softer shots are not necessarily uh, something that exists as a result of this restoration. In some of those cases, it's just the way the film was shot. All right, so let's move on to special features here. Uh, there are not a ton of special features here, but there is one uh, featurette in particular uh, that I think is worth noting. Um, there is a brand new 43-minute retrospective uh, called Fear is Not an Option, Looking Back at True Lies. 
Um, and it's a really nice presentation. Uh, you got interviews with James Cameron and Arnold and Jamie Lee Curtis, later career interviews like post-2012. It was actually a really enjoyable uh, retrospective. Uh, and they actually, you know, 43 minutes doesn't sound like much, but they actually crammed quite a bit into that 43 minute runtime. Um, and, you know, I was, I felt completely satisfied after watching it. It's a really good uh, retrospective that uh, I would definitely encourage you guys to check out uh, after you've watched the film. And I think there's also a few small uh, archival things in there as well, but nothing really that significant, uh, nothing as significant as the 43-minute documentary. All right, so let's move on to my review score here. This one, I'm giving it a little bit of a lower score. It's still good. Uh, it's a 7.5 out of 10. Uh, and for me, anything above a 7 is usually a pretty solid uh, film, right? Uh, sometimes even a six and above are still good films, but uh, I give the restoration on this one a 7.5. Uh, like I said, it's a it's a little bit more uh, process looking. It's a little bit more unnatural looking uh, than the other two movies I've uh, been discussing here today. But keep in mind, it's still the best this thing has ever looked on home media in my eyes. So uh, I certainly wouldn't go back to watching an old DVD of this compared to this. Hell no. Um, of course, you, you got to have the 4K. But just understand, this is not a bad looking release. It looks good. It's decent. Um, it's just not as spectacular as Aliens or The Abyss. So for that reason, uh, the processing, the heavier processing uh, on this one, uh, I had to dock it a couple points. And uh, so, yeah, 7.5 out of 10 seemed about right to me. OK, so that about wraps it up for my 4K takeaways of the latest James Cameron releases. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, overall, I highly recommend uh, these new James Cameron 4Ks. Um, but I also recommend that you watch them with your own eyes and decide for yourself if you dig them or not. I think they're all awesome. Uh, but sure, True Lies is maybe not as solid as The Abyss or Aliens, um, but overall, I really like that clean, modern look, uh, and I do think that these new James Cameron 4Ks are the best these films have ever looked on physical media. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Have you seen these new restorations yourself yet? Um, and if so, what did you think? Uh, and if you if you disagree with some of the things I've said here, that's totally fine. Still feel free to leave a comment. Uh, like I said earlier, there's plenty of room for a little friendly discourse and healthy disagreement. We don't all have to agree on everything. But I definitely want to hear your guys' thoughts uh, on these new 4Ks. And if you haven't gotten these 4K restorations yet, if you haven't even picked them up yet, haven't even ordered them, um, then let me know, uh, you know how this review helped you. Uh, are you more convinced to uh, pick them up now that you've seen this review? Or are you less convinced to uh, pick them up now? Um, you know, like I said, it's really going to depend on uh, how one views that kind of modern look that he's given the films and that, uh, you know, the fact that there's uh, not a whole lot of visible grain uh, in the films. There is grain there. It's just been reduced uh, greatly. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, thank you so much for watching today. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you soon. <laughs>